If you're looking for a successor to the SKX, then look no further. Hi and welcome to Last Watch. It's less than six months since the Seiko SKX lineup met its demise. There had been many rumours that the SKX was growing a bit long in the tooth and would be put out to pasture. Mark at Long Island Watch was the first to break the news in a sort of unofficial, official announcement. Turns out he'd been told well in advance and had managed to keep it a well-guarded secret. If you're looking for someone to share a confidence with, then Mark is definitely your man. Now, although the discontinuation of the SKX had been suspected, it didn't prevent many a dive watch fan from mourning its loss and wondering what Seiko might release as a replacement. We didn't have to wait long as Seiko introduced the SRPD Seiko 5 Sports Collection, which drew its looks from the defunct SKX. The SKX was a firm favourite with watch modders, it probably still is, and this new 5 Sports range would appear to be Seiko's mod or interpretation of the SKX. The launch met a mixed reaction but on the whole left many underwhelmed as the new range is somewhat light on core dive features. How successful they turn out to be is yet to be decided. What does any of this have to do with the turtle? Like many, I had just assumed that the turtle, an icon in itself, had been around for decades, equaling the longevity of the SKX. But it turns out I was mistaken. I have socks older than the current turtle lineup. Where does this misconception come from? Well, that's down to familiarity and where the turtle gets its DNA. The original turtle lineup was introduced in 1976 when Seiko launched the 6306 Diver and later the 6309. These watches were retired respectively in 1981 and 1988. Like the SKX, the 6306 and the 6309 were well respected and are still highly collectible. Jumping forward some 30 years to 2016, Seiko decided to reissue the Turtle. After all, who doesn't love a Seiko reissue? The new watch was given a completely new reference, the SRP777, but was unmistakably a Turtle. It was followed later in the same year by the SRP775, SRP779, SRP773, SRPA21, SRPA19 and the SRPB01. In successive years, the range has grown to include the SRPB11, SRPC25, SRPC23, SRPC44, SRPC48, SRPC49, SRPC95, SRPC91, SRPCD01, and more recently, the SRPD21. I should add that some of these watches were limited or special editions and were only released to specific markets or connected to certain organisations and charities, making them even more collectible and highly sought after. Yes, Last Watch, but what does this have to do with the SKX? Well, this is my assumption. Let's say you're Seiko and looking to kill off a watch that refuses to die. What do you do? Replacing it with a better spec alternative is a good place to start. It's no secret that Seiko have been trying to retire the SKX for quite some time, and the release of the new Turtle lineup falls neatly into that time frame. I'll come back to that in due course, but before I digress any further, let's get on with today's review of the Save the Ocean SRPC91K1, more commonly known as the Seiko Turtle STO. In short, this watch is aligned with a charity, more specifically the Fabienne Cousteau Ocean Learning Centre, which is a non-profit organisation dedicated to marine conservation and education. Buy this watch or any of the other STOs and you're making a donation as a percentage of the sales will go to the fund which may or may not help save the world's oceans. Now let's look at the watch and consider that apart from the colour variations, all turtles are fundamentally the same. We have a diameter of 44.9mm, a lug to lug of 47.3 millimeters, a lug width of 22 millimeters, a case thickness of 13.2 millimeters, and a weight of just over 122 grams. The dimensions would suggest that this is a big watch, but in reality it weighs much smaller than its proportions, and it all comes down to the magic of that cushion case. Its oval shape resulting in a lug to lug which is only marginally bigger than its width. This allows the watch to sit quite comfortably on my 7 inch wrist and on a par with some 42mm watches in my collection. The simplicity of the 316L stainless steel case shape is mesmerising. 
The top is entirely brushed and frames the bezel without any unnecessary lines as it slips away to encompass the strap. There are no protruding lugs to speak of as the lugs are cut into the infamous turtle shape. The side of the case has a subtle edge to define top from bottom and the most comfortable curve towards your wrist. And just to prove that Seiko are no slouches when it comes to case finish, this has been highly polished in contrast to the circular brushing on top. The case profile is an art in simplicity, a sort of banana shape that has passed EU guidelines and is almost but not quite straight to its curved lugs, where you might be surprised to find some drill lug holes. Highly beneficial to those of you that like to switch your straps out on a regular basis. The crown sits at the 4 o'clock position, the only imperfection to the body of the watch being a cutout which allows the crown to sit partially embedded and thus protected without the need for additional guards. A perfect imperfection. The crown itself is a good size, easy to grip and pops out reassuringly when unscrewed. It winds smoothly and pulls out further to reveal a quick set date facility. The crown has a black PVD coating which contrasts well with this stainless steel case. Unfortunately it's not signed. How much more would this watch have cost to have a signed crown? The rear of the watch reveals a screw down case back embossed with the great wave of Kanagawa by Katsushika Hokusai. It has the words Air Divers 200 meters Seiko Special Edition, reference to the 4R36 movement inside, stainless steel and the Prospects logo. More on those in a moment. Back to the front of the dial we have a substantial black PVD double layered notch bezel with a two-tone aluminium bezel insert. The colour of which is a deep sky blue starting at the 12 o'clock position which becomes a much deeper navy colour from the 20 minute marker as it progresses clockwise back to the 12. It has silver arabics denoting the 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 markers, batons to indicate the 5 minute intervals and dot indices to measure the minutes. The 12 o'clock inverted triangle has a recessed loom pip. The bezel itself isn't flat, it has a gentle slope towards the centre of the dial where it meets a sunken flat hardlex crystal. The bezel is 120 click, unidirectional and turns like the majority of dive watches anti-clockwise. It's a little loose for my liking, quite free moving. I would prefer it with a bit more tension and possibly less clicks as it's quite prone to slipping back half a second before your required marker. It does have quite a nice ratchety sound. I feel a bit like a cat burglar trying to crack a safe when I turn this. Beneath the Hardlex crystal we have the major selling point of this particular turtle and the reason I chose it. A beautifully crafted graduated three dimensional blue dial that becomes almost black as you dive deeper towards the 6 o'clock marker. It's broken up by uneven horizontal lines to give the appearance of being under the ocean waves. It's fair to say that this dial takes its inspiration from the Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller but it will take you to a fraction of its depth for a fraction of the price. Sitting atop this ocean of blue we have Islands of White. It's no secret that I have a penchant for four patina, but there is something quite refreshing about the Save the Ocean dial. The hour markers are applied silver frames, which on very close inspection appear to be blasted like a reflective sandy beach and topped off with lashings of white Lumibrite. This makes the watch glow a gorgeous green, brighter than any other dive watch in my collection. Only the Citizen BN0150 comes anywhere close. The majority of these island markers are circular except for the 6 and 9 o'clock position which have a trapezoid shape with an extended jetty giving them a paddle like appearance. The 3 o'clock position has a double date window showing both the day and date on a white backdrop. The 12 o'clock position is a double trapezoid divided by what might be considered a sword shape. Beneath this we have a silver printed Seiko logo. Above the 6 o'clock position we have Automatic Divers 200 and the Prospects logo that many mistakenly see as an X, but for clarity's sake this is a P and an S that intercut with each other and affirm that this watch is part of Seiko's professional specification dive watches. Below the 6 marker we have some very fine printed text denoting the 4R36 movement within. There is a blue chapter ring that circles the dial with clean white indices. Legibility with this watch is not an issue. The chapter ring is also a reminder of Seiko's quality control for what is considered an entry level dive watch. It's barely noticeable with the naked eye but the alignment is off by a hair. After seeing countless pictures of badly aligned chapter rings on Seiko divers I consider myself very lucky. The hour hand resembles a stubby fence post, the minute marker most definitely an arrow. 
Both are finely brushed and filled again with an abundance of Lumibrite, and they have matching syringe tips for accuracy. They should look more than familiar to anyone who's ever owned an SKX. The second hand, ironically for a tool watch, is the most delicate looking elongated stick with a counterbalance lollipop. Like the indices on the dial, this has a sandblasted texture. The lollipop, like the hands, is inlaid with Lumibrite. The graceful sweep of the seconds hand leads us neatly to the workhorse of this watch, the 4R36 calibre and in-house Seiko movement with 25 joules and a 41 hour power reserve, with a beat rate of 21,600 ticks per hour, or 6 a second. It has an accuracy rating of between plus 45 and minus 35 seconds per day, quite a wide sweep, no pun intended. I feel this watch may still need some bedding in as I've had between minus 13 and plus 6 seconds a day variation depending on wrist time. It seems to run slow on the wrist but makes up time when left to rest. Wearing this watch over a week it settled down to plus or minus 2 seconds a day. I doubt anyone would complain about that. If you've been following my channel and I really hope you have then you'll know that I'm big on bracelets and would love to have the STO on some quality metal. However, the quality of the rubber strap on the turtle shouldn't be underestimated. The silicon they've used is very flexible and comfortable on the wrist. The face is smooth, the only decoration being a circular inlay holding the Kanagawa Great Wave at the tip of its tongue. The reverse has a mud print texture which aids in its grip. The strap is finished with a substantial polished stainless steel tang and buckle sporting the Seiko name. There is also an overly large brush keeper, again emblazoned with a Seiko logo. Although this watch has 22mm lugs, the strap jumps out to 24mm and then tapers back to 20mm. The compression ribs are relatively flexible. What sells the strap to me is the way that the first rib lines up beautifully with a watch case between those lugs both on and off the wrist. As the strap is designed to go over a wetsuit, it has a bit of length to it, so will accommodate a large wrist. The excess on my 7 inch wrist would benefit from a second keeper to prevent bulging. In the back of my head I'd like to think that Seiko had a well thought out plan to replace the XKX, which failed. They introduced a new SRP line starting with the 777, a reissue of the Turtle. Consider that the original SKX was 007. The Turtle line grew with the addition of the SRPA, SRPB, SRPC and the SRPD prefixes, which encompassed all of the turtles and the samurais. The introduction of all these new well spec affordable watches still couldn't quash the interest in the SKX, so they gave up the fight and discontinued the SKX anyway. The new SRPD sports line with a familiar looking SKX shape were released in short succession. I paid £260 for this Seiko turtle. The new Seiko 5 sports lineup recommended retail price starts at around £250, though I believe they are now being discounted. The price of the outgoing SKX is climbing. You may well be able to pick one up if you're lucky in the same price range. Given the three choices, where would you prefer to spend your money? Of all these options, the Turtle is the standout for me. Dive watches are designed to withstand the ocean. The Turtle is a watch that looks like it was designed by the ocean. It is a case that could so easily have been sculpted by the erosion of the waves and the waves are there on the dial as a reminder. If you're not a fan of the Save the Ocean dial then there are more than a dozen different variants to choose from in the Turtle range, though you might be hard pushed to source some of the more collectible options. If I have to pick at any negatives on this watch, I would have to mention the free moving bezel. I would much prefer it to be somewhat more stiff. The Lumibrite on the lollipop counterbalance is something to contend with as using it in the dark means you're minus 30 seconds on your time. Luckily I don't dive. I would be much happier without the date window but I'm slowly coming round to it. A sapphire crystal and a signed crown would be a nice touch. The strap after only a few weeks on the wrist is already showing signs of wear and is a bit of a fluff magnet but who's looking at the strap when you have this beautiful dial? There's also every chance this strap will be replaced by a bracelet sooner rather than later. I would appreciate your suggestions on that. I'm still waiting to get an accurate reading on the 4R36 movement. I feel the need for a time grapher drawing ever closer. Then of course there's a chapter ring misalignment, which in my case was very minor. Putting all that to one side, 
The positives outweigh the negatives. The STO is a gorgeous watch. You'd be a fool not to own one. The only really hard decision is what colour option do you go for? And if you're still not sold on the turtle and hankering for an SKX, well, you'd better pull your finger out and grab one while you still can. Thanks for watching and be sure to share your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you all soon in my next video, Seiko's 2020 reissue of the SKX. Obviously I'm kidding.